This is the story of a branch line, a rural railway in its last years of operation. Passenger services on the Keswick line were based on connections with trains running between Crewe and Carlisle. The starting point was Penrith. Trains that went to Keswick served other communities on the way, villages with romantic sounding names like Threlkeld, Troutbeck, Penruddock and Blencarb. The branch line originally linked Cockermouth, Keswick and Penrith and was opened in 1864 by the Cockermouth, Keswick and Penrith Railway, the CKP. The company built the line but never owned any locomotives or rolling stock. Passenger trains were run by the London and North Western Railway and freight and mineral traffic was handled by the North Eastern Railway. The whole line passed into the ownership of the London, Midland and Scottish Railway at the grouping of 1923 and to British Railways at the time of nationalisation in 1948. I thank you very much. Right. In the post-war years, goods traffic dwindled rapidly and passenger trains were still being hauled by the old Webb cauliflower engines built in late Victorian times. Often they couldn't manage the steep gradients and had to stop to make up steam. By the 1950s, the line had become a worn-out anachronism. Measures to economise included the introduction of diesel multiple units in 1955. These achieved an immediate and dramatic increase in revenue. Blencow station, which had previously been closed, was reopened and schedules were rapidly improved and accelerated. But by 1960, the route was losing about £50,000 a year. It was found that by a combination of economies, the deficit could be removed by half. The stations could be converted into unstaffed halts. All signalling could be removed and all double track lifted. The bells in the signal boxes that used to beat out important decisive messages were silenced. Nothing remained for the station staff to do, so they moved on or retired. Kept running by an annual government grant, the Keswick Line was a railway with a decidedly insecure future. The last operating man on the CKNP was Sid Ridley, who started as a junior porter for five shillings a week at Pedrelic. I started on the 17th of March 1919, until the amalgamation in 1924, and then I went on to the London North Western, to Logill and uh, Lancaster, Morecambe and Preston and all these places. But eventually I came back onto the CKNP as a grade one porter to Pedrelic. And from there I went into the signal box here. It's been my life, I'd nearly just closed on 50 years. When I first started on here, there was a, a station master, two porters and two signalmen. When I finished, there was two signalmen, that was all that was left. And we had the, the instruments were in the booking office, and we had to come up here to, to work the frames, you know. But all the white colours, they're redundant signals, you say. But actually, there's only two white uh, levers in the frame when I was working it. All the others were connected, you say. One was the down distant, uh, the home signal, the starter, the outer home, and the advanced starter. The first one I started was the old CK and field. They hadn't any running powers on their own railway. No, there were, but they bought an engine, primarily to run ballast trains. And uh, this old engine, it stood in the carriage sheds at Cockermouth, I can see it yet. They called it the Strachan. Oh, it was really old fashioned. But they were never allowed to use it. When I uh, first started on the railway, there were uh, the old jumbos and uh, cauliflowers and the DX. The DX was a 17-inch cylinder. 
We all named any religion bows. On the front of the shed, I remember the ostrich, the Marcus Duro, the bee, Skiddo, Mary Carlisle, the old uh, London Northwest uh, rolling stock, six whalers. It was a track from here to Thalcold, and a uh, single track from here to Lamcow. But on account of the mineral trains, they made a double line from here to Shelby. It was coke from uh, the east coast, Middlesbrough, to Workington, and loading back with iron ore to Middlesbrough, you see. That was before they got their own coke implant at Workington. It was actually built for a mineral line, was this. Yes, it's surprising how things have changed. I remember one morning the old station master, when I was just quite a lad, he said, do you know how many horses and cars are at Penrodick Station at this particular moment? For my part, I said, too many. He said, there's actually 44, which was incredible. That was guarding coal and uh, foodstuffs and bringing stuff onto the rail. climbed over open moorland to Troutbeck Summit, 886 feet above sea level, the highest railway in Cumberland. Then came a fast downhill run to Troutbeck Station. Troutbeck for Ulthwater and the rolling hills of John Peel's hunting country. At one time, a nine mile branch from here to Heskett New Market was contemplated but never built. Troutbeck was a short platform remote from a main road at High Gate, serving scattered farms and cottages, where trains stopped twice a day to take school children to and from Keswick. Mrs. Jessie Titchington at nearby High Gate Close was a regular passenger when she was at school. It was a grand way of travelling by rail. It was good for stock and everything. And it was grand for Troutbeck Auction because they had a loading dock there, you see. We used to have to drive them to Troutbeck Station and there was no bridge at, over that river at Troutbeck. So we used to have to wade through the water at Troutbeck to get into the wagons, to get to the station, you see. And it was a, a bit awkward if it was a wild stormy morning that just wouldn't go. To wave to us, you know, the firemen and the drivers. And when we were working in Hairfields, after we left school, we used to wave to all the trains because we loved it. We loved the trains. We used to get to Smock as soon as they left the local station, you know, really. And you could see when there were fire, and you could see all the uh, smock, black smock coming out. And you used to make them poof going up there. Oh, I was very comfortable and, um, and and really very clean. And I also had lovely pictures in. That's why I used to like to look at pictures, you know. There was an old 
gentleman used to come from uh, Dokre. He used to get on train at Trabek and he was a tamal catcher. And he used to have all these traps and things in with him, you know, in uh, compartment with his, his mall traps. And we had a special guard that we used to love to be on, and his name was Guard Hollywood from Workington. And they used to get uh, all those children into the guard's van and um, bring, uh, take all our names down in a little book. And then uh, the next day when he was on, he used to bring us little bags of sweets. And we thought it was absolutely wonderful. And we, we, uh, we loved him very much. And uh, my mother was a great uh, good hand at making butter. And she used to make ornamental butter. And uh, so for his kindness to my sister and I, she used to make him, uh, uh, odd times, she used to make him a little basket of butter and uh, put some little pieces of butter, shaped his eggs in, and oh, he used to be very, very pleased indeed with it. It was really lovely, and he used to be quite thrilled about this little basket of butter. He used to take all our, our butter and eggs by train from here to Keswick, and we used to get a cab at Keswick Station and t to take us down into town. When my husband and I were married from here at Highgate Loss, we went from a, for our honeymoon from the little platform that I went to school from, at High Gate. And we went to Southport. We had a uh, good guests and uh, they all went down to the little platform and set us off. So it was a great thrill. And that was in uh, 1927. Further down the line, Threlkeld granite quarries provided a thriving goods traffic. Up to a hundred wagons a day were moved through the sidings there. Threlkeld for Blencathra and St John's in the Vale. John Tyson, a retired plate layer, remembers busy days. Well, at one time there were two big trains of uh, conventions coming, you see, from Houston. There was a train to Leeds on Saturdays during the summer. There was a Sunday train from Glasgow and a, and a Sunday train from Newcastle. Well, I know when the, these excursions, probably West Cumberland excursions, on a Sunday, but to bring trains up to where to stable them. Established four or five at Keswick and then brought two or three up here, you see, to, to put them into these sidings. And set off from me. <laughs> Awful struggles up there sometimes. Quite often they uh, probably got up to, there's a curve uh, beyond the high gate. Uh, around that curve they used to have some struggles around there and often uh, got stuck like and had to make up steam and that sort of thing. From Threlkel, the line plunged into the depths of the Greta Gorge in an eight-mile drop to Keswick, crossing the river eight times, a Swiss-like railway of bursting bridges and rock cuttings. Keswick for Derwentwater, Borrowdale and Skiddaw, and by 1966 the end of the line, for although diesels improved the image of the branch, they did little to alter its revenue earning capacity. By 1966, all train services west of Keswick had been withdrawn. But in the comfortable early 1900s, 
the CKNP benefited greatly from the new cult of tourism. The company built the Keswick Hotel alongside the station at a cost of £12,000, and it became a much sought-after centre of accommodation. Retired plate layer Bill Hodson worked on the stretch west of Keswick Station and remembers it in its heyday. I see the burn of the lean on Skiddo. The old dry out of heather, you know. Camaraderie was good, you know. Good chaps. We knew each other. All local fellas, you know. It was very good. Actually, I was on 49 years, but for three weeks. When you were alongside Button Little Lake, you know, beautiful. And then, of course, at last this, and I went to the office of Keswick. And I was there till, uh, well, a month over 70. Of course, the excursions coming in, you know, terrific. Then in convention time, there was what they call a boot special bringing the conventions from London. There was two trains, double-headed, and it was coming about six o'clock at night. Gosh. Of course, they were bringing about 7,000 people in, apart from what has come by a car, you know. It should never have been closed, this, you know, the beauty of it. From Pinnis to Boston, that's beautiful. When they say it wasn't paying all that, Tommy Rod. Absolutely, tell me what. That was beaching for you. West of Braithwaite Station, the line skirted the shores of Bassenthwaite with superb views of the lake on one side and the wooded slopes of Thornthwaite Forest on the other. The Forestry Commission's development of Thornthwaite Forest stretched from Winlatter to Beckwithup and it was the view of many that the enormous amount of timber likely to reach maturity would have been best removed by rail. Bassenthwaite Lake Station was pleasantly situated among trees at the west end of the lake. There was a passing loop here and a couple of sidings from which there had been a steady flow of timber traffic, much of it in the form of pit props for the collieries in West Cumberland. At the west end of Bass Lake Station, the line crossed the main Keswick Cockermouth Road, the level crossing being mechanically operated from the signal box. Embleton Station, halfway between Bass Lake and Cockermouth, had one platform, a small goods yard, and a siding which served the close quarry of the Keswick Granite Company. Cockermouth Station, where the line linked up with the Workington and Cockermouth Railway, had three platforms and carriage and goods sidings. But by 1959, the heavy traffic they'd been built to serve had dwindled, and British Rail announced it was considering withdrawing all services. At once, hoteliers and shopkeepers feared for the future of the tourist industry. Would Wordsworth's birthplace cease to be on the list of points to be done by Lakeland visitors? But the town made no real effort to oppose the closure on the grounds of hardship to local passengers. The number of residents using the trains was so small, it would have been futile. In 1966, Cockermouth Station was closed. Only Keswick fought tooth and nail and was successful. The Minister of Transport refused to confirm the closure order on the Penrith to Keswick section of the line. But it was a stay of execution that was only to last for six years. The official announcement on the station's notice board signalled the end of the line. Closure, Saturday the 4th of March, 1972. And this time there was to be no reprieve. With the removal of all signalling and station staff, all possible economies had been put into practice. Even run at its most basic, it was still losing money. The Keswick line would finally succumb to the age of the motor car.
for many, the climb out of Keswick through the Greeter Gorge was the most attractive part of the journey. The line wandered through trees and copses and seemed to lose itself in the landscape. Leaving the gorge and crossing to the southern side of the valley at the entrance to St John's in the Vale was Threlkeld Station. In the days of steam, the line from Threlkeld to Penruddock was double tracked to carry increased passenger traffic during the summer months. Threlkeld Station was constructed on the island principle and had extensive sidings serving the granite quarries and nearby lead mines. Skirting the foot of Blencathra, the line climbed 400 feet in the four and three quarter miles from Threlkeld to Troutbeck and crossed Mosdale Viaduct with its 12 arches and total length of 400 feet, the longest engineering structure on the route. Before the advent of motor cars, the railway line was the focal point of the district. Anybody travelling any distance at all did so by rail, and goods for a wide surrounding area all came by train. Those were the days of steam, the oil lamp, strict discipline under the station master, and hard work. Memories of the palmy days of the line are particularly vivid in the mind of Ted Watson, once a familiar figure to passengers travelling through Troutbeck. Troutbeck, 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 about every... Two or three times up the train, you just have to show Troutbeck as you know. Luckily, in the last few years, in fact, uh, you could nearly see what was in the train. Uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, you walk the length of the train, you could practically see if there's anyone wanting to alight, you know. Aye, that's right. You give them every chance. And when these coach trains, uh, uh, when the parties, Doc Ray, used to meet them off the trains and all that, yeah, you had to be on the alert and, uh, and shout and get them out, you see. Yes. Oh, day, in days gone by, his uh, uh, Ullswater coach, his horse coach, his different coaches used to come to the station to pick the passengers up from Ullswater, from Patterdale. Now, uh, in days gone by, you know, in, in about the 1920s and 30s and on there, used to be co wagonettes come up to Taubeck station at uh, about half past five at night and uh, meet these trains off, meet them off every day. Every day they used to come, come over. Aye, aye. Yes, they did. It's a bit one of the busiest stations on the, on the section, this. I've seen round timber lying from yon 
Bo- signal box top yonder, yon, right down to the yard, round timber to load up on timber wagons, you know. And you used to get cake and straw and hay, and we used to get about four, five wagons, uh, uh, t- 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 uh, five or six wagons of baby cake a month. Baby's cake alone, linseed cake, palm olive cake, and then with the green side mines, we used to have a warehouse there. Uh, an outfresh getting a ton of stuff off in the morning for them, and bag stuff for the farmers who used to have a road in there, do it like. Aye, and, uh, and large stuff up, lead for the green side, spar gravel from Carrick Mines, and all that craft, and loading up, and then you had all the platform duties to do as well. Of course, there was a little bit extra stuff then, like, uh, but you couldn't hardly have time for your dinner many times. Then you had all the gas to make, there's a gas house up there, you had your own gas to make for lights, and all the signals to do, signal lumping to do, clocking to do inside, and booking, so wonder if you got through it them days. You never had any spare time. No, you are going from start to finish. And there was a lead man, a sentinel, the old sentinel used to come over, and Penrith District Road, Road Carrying Company, they used to get calls in. Then we had a call business here as well, a big one. What? I've seen the blooming, I've seen, I've seen in here on a Saturday morning, and I've seen over 30 horses and cars in there, and, and, and with 30 horses and cars on a Saturday morning, waiting for calls and stuff. Had two of the biggest bloody all eye on here, one year. Each end, I think Mrs. Carter used to give them a duck of feed when she went into the garden sometimes. And Mrs. Stret- Miss Stretfield, she's a terrible flower gardener. She used to, she used to show roses and that and, and such like. And she says, do you know, Ted? She says, you have two gladi- gladioli there. She says, they would win any show. And uh, one had 23 blooms on it, this one. And it was a whitey one inside, like velvet, and a, a pinky, uh, pinky uh, cast inside it. Uh, it was a lovely thing, until there was an orange one. I got them off her, off her inspector at Keswick. He says, I'll fetch you some bloody all I did. Two or three bloody all I. I used to grow Hunter Rynums, they used to do well in here. Maybe a daily in the middle. And then I used to put blue and white labelia all around the hedges. And fill them with Hunter Rynums and a, and a good dahlia. I wonder what they're doing with the old, uh, old harmonium. So they used to make a service... Uh, just to shape the children, and the parson used to come up from Grisdale and, uh, 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 and, uh, and give it in the afternoon, well, about an hour. I used, it used to be in here at one time, throw in that lady's waiting room, and I used to put a fire on. I looked after it for years. I should think I looked after it for 20 oh, donkey's years in there. I used to open it out and clean it out, and, and there used to be a dulce come there, and we used to have some grand dose. Used to, sister used to play the organ, and, and then there's a, when she got married, there's a... A young woman come from Grisdale. Oh, I used to have some grand sing-songs in there, and the parson used to preach a bit sermon, and, you know, and, and it was grand. Every soon, every, mo- uh, every, um, once a month. And once a month, every month. Mm. I used to put a good roaring fire on. I used to get engine call up, steamers. I used to roast them out. I used to get a blowing fire on in there uh, in the morning. I used to get it going. I never did, I lost all that after I left it, because I couldn't keep... I couldn't get a blooming fire going, or too idle. I used to, I didn't starve anybody, I used to get a blooming fire on for my own good. <laughs> <laughs> the head there, there would be two signalmen, and two porters, and a clerk, and station master. And then they sort of dwindled out and dwindled out and dwindled out till they got what, done away with one signalman, part there, middle there, and the por- and two porters working round. And then they got, uh, got it worked around, uh, so uh, they got it worked around till I had it myself all the lot. Bought a signalman, broken clerk, everything.
Saturday, the 4th of March, 1972, the last day for trains on the CKNP. Extra diesel units had to be brought into service to cope with the demand for seats. Despite the wintry weather, scores of passengers wanted to make a farewell sentimental journey. After the last scheduled train was run, Keswick and Penrith Round Table organised a special evening train, a final commemorative round trip for some 400 passengers. As the train left Penrith Station, the town band played Auld Lang Syne, a poignant farewell to the trains that went to Keswick. We loved it. And it was such a nice little railway, you know. And then they put the diesel on. And we liked it. And you could look out the window all the way. And oh, everybody loved it. I can, I can always remember it. We used to, on Saturdays, we used to love to go and have our tea in the secret box of the fire. We lived in the station cottages there, but we used to always uh, nearly have a fight who had to take his tea, and then we used to stay and have our tea with him. I can always remember that. And on a Saturday, across there, the platform was complete. The people, because there wasn't any other locomotion, you'd say, there was just the train. like it, I'm sure of it. All that beautiful view over at Applethwaite and, and right down to Bassenthwaite, a lovely lake, and then Cockermouth's quite nice and all those places down there. It was a really nice run, absolutely beautiful run. I really believe when they closed Keswick train, it was a big blunder. Thank you. 